with me a little bit. Um, with both hands, how many of you guys like this dollar? How, like this twenty dollar bill? How many of you guys? You guys like this stuff? No, you don't like money. You don't like money. Okay. Now, who wants to have this dollar bill? You want this? Or it's twenty dollar bill. Is it play money? It's real money. Okay. So <laughs> now, tell me, what's the first thing? No, you have that in your hands. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? I want to buy something. You want to spend it, right? Yeah. Okay, so obviously when we possess, when we have the possession of money in our hands, we all want to spend it, right? Everyone wants to spend money, we love shopping. Obviously we spend it sometimes on things we need, and sometimes we spend it on things we don't need. According to an article in the 24-7 Wall Street review from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, that the average American household that has an income of $63,000 spends more than $8,000 on goods it needs and goods it doesn't need. Now, how many of us actually take the time to value our money and actually see what we're spending it on? According to an article in Main Street, Americans' Plan to Manage Money and Health in 2011 by Janine Sharonsky states that a survey released by German Research found that one of five consumers currently do not monitor or manage their personal finances at all. In my family, I've always been taught to finance my money, to manage my money, and to budget it and spend it wisely. Um, ever since I started my first job, my father's always said to spend my money wisely, to save it, especially with the um, situation that we're in today in the economy. With the many changes that the economy is going through, the value of the US dollar remains affected and most Americans don't know the extent of it. So today I will be giving you a little bit more knowledge of what the US dollar, US dollar means to us, how it's losing value, and how it's going to affect our economy. According to the, uh, according to the Business Insider derived data by the Bureau of Labor Statistics with the average annual expenditures of an income group less than, sorry, my first point was in being what the U.S. dollar means to us, and the Bureau of Labor Statistics shows us that um, in, uh, a house income with $70,000 spends, um, $4,000 on food, mainly if we don't want to starve to death, obviously one thing we need to survive is food. If we don't want to live in the streets or be homeless, we need to spend money on housing, which is a big part of it. Um, if we want to have good health and remain healthy, we need to spend our money on health care. And for car expenses, if you have a car, obviously you need to spend your money on your gas, on changing your oil, fixing your tires, and there's personal insurance and pensions that also come along with, with having money. And basically, to us, obviously, we need money to survive, right? If without money, we wouldn't be able to survive, right? We'd be pretty much bums. Now, even though people are spending money, the value of the dollar remains to fail which is the second point I am going to get to. The 2008 the current account deficit, which is where we spend money more than we loan, um, was at $7 billion. $7 billion. Um, within that time of 2000-2008, the dollar declined by 40%. And between that time, the recession actually grew, the, the recession strengthened, and in March 2009, the, the dollar resumed to decline, which led to the $14, 14 trillion dollar debt that we are now in today. Kimberly Amato also writes in, Kimberly Mayo writes in her article that creditor nations like China and Japan are worried that the U.S. government won't really support the value of the U.S. dollar. Now, by that, the, with, the weaker, with a weaker dollar, the deficit will obviously cost less for us 
to have to pay off. Basically saying that the U.S. dollar is probably just waiting for other people to buy our deficit where it won't cost us as much to have to pay it back to all the other countries. The Business Insider states that during the Obama during the Obama um, administration, during the Obama administration, the U.S. government has encountered more debt than it did from the time being of George Washington and from the time to the time of Bill Clinton. Since Obama was sworn into presidency, the national debt per household has increased by thirty-five thousand eight hundred and thirty-five dollars. The national debt has been increasing by an average of $4 billion per day since the Obama administration. Since Obama has been in the office, our debt has pretty much rised, and it is rising very, very rapidly. It keeps on going, and it is it's growing too fast that it may be really hard for us to regain um, stability in the economy. Now, with the decreasing of the U.S. dollar, the rising of the uh, the rising of the debt obviously is going to affect our economy, right? Because obviously we're not going to have enough money for us to pay back the debt because it is too much. When the lessening of the value of the U.S. dollar, with the lessening of the value of the U.S. dollar and high interest rates. There will also be, the economy is going to be affected by high interest rates. It's also going to be affected with a slower economy and it's going to give us a weaker job market. And it's also going to raise our taxes and it is going to give us higher inflation. With the lessening of these three points here, the potential of our, the, the potential of our daily lives is being affected. As, interest, as the interest rates pinch up the form of, as interest rates pinch up um, to attract treasury bond, investors will soon, the investors, sorry, as interest rates rise up, the, they attract treasury bond investors, and this will soon rise the rates for us as consumers. So not only are investors going to stop investing in art, um, in our products, but it, by them doing that, it's also going to raise prices for us here at home. The government is stimulating the economy by spending lots of money. When it gets more expensive to do that, they will have to pull back, cut benefits, and cut transfer payments. That will further slow the economy and the job market, as says by Russell Korsrich, of the iShare Global Chief Investment Strategic Strategist and author of the $10 trillion gamble. The economy is affected by also higher tax rates. The higher tax rates um, hit, will hit consumers probably as early as 2011 once the Bush era, um, the Bush era tax cuts expire. And once that expires, um, the, de the Washington will start thinking more of the debt and what they're going to do about it. Now to sum up, let's go over what I just talked to you about. First, what the dollar means to us, how it's going to, how it's losing its value due to the debt that we're in and how it affects our economy and high interest rates and, um, and losing uh, obviously a slower economy and a slower job market. So I hope you guys learned a little bit more something about the U.S. dollar today.